Hello and welcome back to Bites of History with Irene Walton. I'm your host, Irene Walton, and today we are talking about Terrare. Whew, what a story this one is. Have you ever wondered how it made it to your table? Have you ever wondered how it made it to your shelf? If you love food, then this is the show for you. Bites of History with Irene. Right up top, I want to thank my patrons so much. I love you guys. It is such a joy to have you in my Patreon. Thank you for being a part of it. And if you would like to join my Patreon, you can check it out at patreon.com slash Irene Walton. I do need to give a disclaimer right up top. This episode is going to have some stuff that some people might not like. If you have a sensitive stomach, this episode might not be the one for you. If you uh, just don't like generally gross things this episode might not be the one for you. It's also, it can get a little sad at certain points. Not a little, pretty, pretty very sad uh, at certain points. <laughs> um, so yes, just a, just a trigger warning right up top. I have like 40 other episodes about like champagne and Dunkin' Donuts that I think you might like better, which would be great. If you do want to stay and tune into the Terrari episode, welcome in and hello. We're going to have a very interesting time. And you might get an idea of that by the sources that I that I used for this episode. All that's interesting.com, Ripley's.com, MessyNessyChic.com, BBC.com, HistoryDefined.net, and Wikipedia.org. Now, I also want to say I really like to do super factual episodes that are very, very um, like firsthand account based, that are very just definitive, truthful primary source episodes. This episode is is highlighting something that takes place back in the 1700s in France. So it is not super, super well documented. There are There is one medical record that we will definitely be pulling from, but a lot of this is hearsay, but it's been backed up on multiple different accounts. So do with that what you will. But this was just too fascinating not to do an episode on. So I wanted to bring you guys into this crazy story. Terrare is born in 1772 in Lyon, France. We don't know his exact birth date, but we do know it's 1772. Now, from what I could find, there was not too much about his early life, like baby vibes, but around the time he was kind of becoming a teenager, it seems like sort of late teens, Terrare got kicked out of his house. And you're probably wondering, who is this guy? Why are we talking about him? Why is this related to food? How is this a bites of history? Terrare got kicked out of his house because his family could not afford to feed him anymore. Terrare was eating so much and with such frequency that his family literally could not afford to keep him in their home any longer. And this wasn't like your brother ate a whole box of cereal and you're like, ugh, that's so annoying. Terrare was eating anything and everything and a lot of it. Terrare's appetite could not be satiated. You know, I'm sure 1770s France was a different time. The parents just kicked him out. They couldn't afford it. That's how that works. So he had to he had to figure his life out somehow and he had to figure his appetite out somehow. So he fell into a crowd that was not the best crowd. It was criminals, that was sex workers. They were kind of just like stealing and grifting as they needed. And that's kind of all Terrare was able to do. Now, Terrare did have this, if you want to call it a, it's like a, a, at the time, I'm sure it was kind of a gift for him, but it is a curse for sure. The reason it was a gift is because he was now a part of this group and was eating anything and it would get the attention of all of the people that were watching, you know, in these streets of France in 17, in the 1780s, it would get the attention of all the people that were watching and they would be like, oh, he would, Terrari is not going to eat this, da, 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 paying only attention to him. And then all the criminals would like be stealing from their bags, be, st- be, you know, whatever the sex workers would be like getting a new client, etc. So Terrari was kind of this like sideshow attraction and his he attracted a lot of attention you guys terrare ate so much he could eat his body weight in a cow like cow meat his body weight in a 24 hour period now you're probably wondering okay this guy's eating constantly 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 so much stuff what's he look like he must be a thousand pounds 
Terare was a hundred pounds and slight of build. He had a very, very wide mouth with lips that were so thin you could barely see them. He, and his mouth was not only like his lips weren't wide, but his whole mouth was really, really big. And he could fit. It was said that he could fit a dozen eggs in at one time. So he's got a look. He apparently also had very like faint, fair hair, just like thin, fair hair. Now, Terare is this skinny guy, but he eats so much food that his body has to accommodate for it. So there's a ton of loose skin around his stomach, so much so because like when he's eating, it all fills up his stomach. It gets distended. It looks like a big pregnant belly. And then when he's, you know, digested it and it's done, he's just got all this skin. There was apparently so much that he could wrap it around his waist like a belt. And you guys, he's so he's doing these like street performances where people are giving him anything to eat. And he's 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 happy, it seems like, because like he's getting to eat. But he's eating anything. He's eating stones. He's eating corks. This is where it starts to get a little tricky, you guys. So keep in mind. He would eat apples whole and just swallow them, apparently at an extremely large esophagus. It was said that he would eat live mice, live eel, live cats. It was truly like car, like train wreck vibes. Like these people could not look away and they kept giving him things to eat and kept seeing what he would eat. And he ate anything. He was never full. Even after eating a hundred pounds of cow in his 100 pound frame, he wasn't full. So he resorted to eating all of these crazy things, eating inedible things. He would skulk around the gutters for trash. He would eat dirt. It was... It, the more that I was reading about this, because at first I was like, oh, he's like this hungry, like, you know, we have, we have professional, like championship eaters today who will like rate, uh, there's somebody on TikTok, her name's Raina. She'll eat like a thing of ramen that's like 12 pounds, but like she's full after. And I'm sure that she is like, I gotta, I'm sure they have a whole system, but, the, but Terare, it was not the case. He just needed to keep eating, keep eating, keep eating. And again, he was eating anything he could. He would eat animal organs that weren't meant for consumption. He would eat anything that these people gave him. And eventually he saw that he didn't really need this other group of the, the criminals and the sex workers to go around with. He was getting enough attention, enough money and enough food. Well, not enough food, but on his own. So he went off and did a solo act in Paris and he was doing the same thing just now without this whole group of people. So he's in Paris, he's eating anything that people will give him. And that came with its own set of risks. Now he doesn't have a group that he's with, but people are still giving him a bunch of inedible, crazy shit to eat. At one point, Terare collapses in the middle of a performance and the onlookers carry him to a hospital where it is found out that he has an intestinal blockage. So the doctor gives him a lot of laxatives and this cures the problem. So he, you know, gets rid of the blockage. Um, it's actually on record saying that he asks the doctor, he's like, this is my thing. Like I eat anything. Give me your watch. I'll eat your watch. And the doctor's like, all right, great. I just got to be able to do surgery and cut it out of you later. And he's like, Terraria was like, actually never mind. Keep the watch. So it's like Terraria knew what he was doing was crazy, but he also is a human. He's, he's got something in his brain saying that he is in curably hungry. So he just keeps doing it. So around the age of 20, it is 1792 and France is in a war. France is in the French War of the First Coalition, which is a battle against the constitutional kingdom of France. Apparently, I do not know. I'm a food history podcast, not a history history podcast. All you need to know is that Terare is now in the military. As you could imagine, you know, I'm not sure what 1792 French military rations looked like, but I don't think it was a Terare-sized portion. So Terare is 
going around the barracks, offering odd jobs and doing weird stuff so that the soldiers will give him some of their rations so that he could possibly eat some more food. He needs more food and he's doing anything he can to get it. And again, he results to going into the garbage, going into the gutters, eating anything and everything inedible or edible. It doesn't matter to Terare. However, joining the military is a really big step for Terare because he finally meets a doctor that wants to help him. Dr. Pierre-Francois Percy is the doctor who we're going to get our singular like primary source medical record from. I mean, he's fascinated to say the least. Dr. Percy has never seen anything like this. As he observes Terrare, he sees that he's eating way more than his portion of rations, doing whatever he can to get full, eating bandages from the medical ward. He is having a hard time. And Dr. Percy sees this. Now, this is where some weird stuff happens again. Dr. Percy is like, okay, well, let's test these limits. Like, let's see just how much this man can eat. So he he gets a meal prepared that should have fed 15 grown men and Terare houses it, doesn't leave a crumb. Dr. Percy's fascinated. He says, okay, so he's, he can eat this much food. What else will he eat? So he gives him live lizards. He gives him live snakes, which actually were one of Terari's favorites, apparently. Even during these crazy tests and these crazy limit pushing activities, Terari is still. Oh, it's so you guys, it's really gross. <laughs> Even after all of this, Terari is still hungry. He is still caught going in and like drinking the blood that has been let from other soldiers in the medical ward. So he is this medical mystery. Nobody knows what's going on, but they are the French military. And they were like, I wonder if we can use this to our advantage. So they tried to do just that. They had some documents that they needed to get over enemy lines into Russia um, to a French prisoner of war that was in Russia. So they were like, well, Tarare can be a secret spy. He'll eat the documents and then pass them when he gets over enemy lines. And nobody will be the wiser because they're in him. He's not carrying them. It's not easy to find, etc. They try to do this and it does not go well. Uh, <laughs> as you could imagine... This man, Terare, was not the best possible spy. He didn't really look like everyone else. He had a very, he had very unique features. He had that exceptional amount of skin that was, could go around his waist. He also, because he would stretch his mouth so wide and it was so big, he also had his cheeks kind of hanging like jowls because he like had so much stretch going on in there. So his face started to like kind of melt a little bit. And he also apparently with all of the things that he ate, this is really sad with all the things he ate, he apparently had a very, very strong stench about him so much so that Dr. Percy actually said you could smell him from about 20 feet away. And he, he like almost, he had visible, stink lines like in a cartoon when you like are trying to indicate that something is smelly dr percy was like there's big there it's like you can see stink lines it's so noticeable the name terare is uh probably not this man's real name if i haven't said that yet it is likely a nickname that comes from bom bom terare which is like a shorthand for explosions i believe from what i could tell in my research and that was because of his explosive gas from both ends that was apparently debilitating to be around. Um, so, so if you could imagine, this isn't the best guy to be a super secret French spy. Um, and Russians very quickly noticed that and probably from him like eating in the garbage and scrounging around like on the floor and eating dirt, they were probably like, who's this guy? What's going on? So, The Russians capture Terare and put him through some really, really horrible torture. He goes through a mock execution. He goes through a lot of physical abuse. Really, really intense. Finally, he gets back to France and the PTSD that he suffers from this horrible experience in Russia disqualifies him from continuing his military service. However, Dr. Percy is still really fascinated and really does want to help this guy. But that can't last for too long. And here's why. 
So Tarari's kept in the hospital and Dr. Percy's trying all of these different procedures, all of these different medicines to see if he can help Tarari and quell this hunger and just make him a, have a better life. Because it, I cannot imagine that that was a good life to live, which is what makes this so sad. So Dr. Percy gives him a ton of different stuff. They try opiates, vinegar, tobacco pills, soft boiled eggs for some reason. None of this works. Terari is still unbelievably, insatiably hungry. And he's in this hospital. And again, here's another. I know I've warned you guys like seven times, but just again, it is said that Terari was found eating cadavers, uh, human cadavers. It is said that he is found eating a bunch of weird, gross and bad stuff in the hospital. Um, And... The final straw is when a toddler goes missing in the hospital. No, there is no evidence, no factual evidence that this was Terare. But once this happened, they suspected him and they could not keep him around. So they discharge him and Terare is back out into the world on his own. So years later, Dr. Percy is called to a different hospital uh, somewhere else in France. And it turns out that it's Terari. Terari's shown up at this hospital and he calls for Dr. Percy because Dr. Percy is the only one who kind of knows him, who's tried to help him, who is really aware of his condition. And Terari says to Dr. Percy, like, oh, you know, I think it's I think I know what the problem is. Like, I'm so, so sick. And I think it's coming from this gold fork that I ate like two years ago. I think it's like blocking something. I think that's what's happening. That's why I'm so sick. And unfortunately, after a little bit of investigating and medical digging, Dr. Percy finds that Terare has an incredibly severe case of tuberculosis. And a month later, Terare passes away in 1798. Now, I know that that is such a crazy story. And you're probably thinking like, what on earth could that have been? And that's what people are still thinking. People back then couldn't figure it out. And doctors now aren't even entirely sure. There are a lot of hypotheses as to what it could have been. It could have been hyperthyroidism, which would explain the intense hunger and the very fine hair. It could have been a hypothalamus issue, which is like the part in your brain that lets you know when you're hungry and when you're full. It was also, he did do a lot of psychiatric evaluations and it turns out he wasn't, he was like perfectly sane. Like there wasn't anything wrong. Uh, Like he didn't suffer from any mental illnesses that they were aware of. Um, Another another thing that he could have been suffering from was this thing called pika, which is uh, the like desire to eat non edible things. Some people suggest that it could be uh, like a tapeworm situation, which I know we've talked about in a different episode, but it, it, it could have been a lot of things. And it's very sad that it was any of them and that it happened at all. And I know that this is kind of a weird, icky, kind of squeamish episode. Um But I just thought it was fascinating and I thought you guys would like it too. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I know this one was kind of weird, so I'm sorry if you didn't like it. Ah! But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful day. Uh, this This one was weird. This one was tricky. All right. I love you. Goodbye.